Hello everybody, welcome back to yet another episode of Cape Rugby TV here on Cape Town TV, Wednesday 9 o'clock, nice to have you along. Tonight is of course a show uh, that is looking forward to next year, preparation of what you need to do and uh, how you get ready for next season. Obviously you've just come out of a tough club rugby season and uh, you want to know how to get ready for next season. We know some of you guys are going up, some of you are going down, but those of you that are going up are certainly going to have to think about what it is to expect for next year. We're going to look tonight with a panel of experts, and let me introduce them to you. As always, uh, Mr. H, Herman Abrams. Hello, Mr. H. Good evening, JP. How are things with you? Oh, I'm fine. I'm fine. All, all good. All chirpy? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Steph Tatui, uh, conditioning coach, uh, head conditioning coach of Western Province. Nice to have you here. Hello, JP. How are you? Good, good. You've, of course, uh, been on the show before, so you're no stranger to Cape Rugby TV. Yeah, good to be back. And uh, making his debut on the show, long overdue, uh, the infamous um, Greg Hechter. How's it, Greg? I don't know about the infamous part, but really nice to be here, JP. Thanks for the opportunity. Yeah, no, it's, it's good to have you here. It's, and from our point of view, we're, of course, uh, very excited to have uh, your expertise, all three of you. Mr. H, you from the administration point of view, from Western Province Rugby. Steph, you from a conditioning point of view. And I think Greg, we're going to talk to you very much from Western Province overall and a strategic point of view and how to plan and that. So... Folks, if you're a club out there, hopefully um, you'll take something from this and uh, get yourself into the preparation and planning mode and we'll, we'll speak to the experts about how to do that because next year is going to be a monster club rugby season and you want to get ready for that. So without any further ado, um, Mr. H, let, let's start with you actually. Um, in actual fact, uh, Greg, Steph, uh, congratulations on your win of the Curry Cup. Thank you. Thank you. We were, we were, uh, we were here... Um, uh, last week with the curry cup um and we had jerome and and Nazimia and of course mr h and uh uh yeah maybe greg quickly from your side tell us how did it, how did it feel to win that cup oh, awesome but i think if we were on the show last week we'd be looking considerably worse than we are today <laughs> but um obviously it's been an 11 year wait so it's been a really special one and particularly this year because it was fairly unexpected from people out there but obviously within the camp we we knew that we had a good chance and it was really exciting to see a plan to come together and it's uh, i think it's uh you know, long time overdue. Yeah. Mm-hmm. We're really excited about that one, yeah. Uh, Steph, I see they didn't give you guys medals or trophies. They gave you these, like, beakers. What uh, do they call them? Goblet speakers? Uh, it was more like a goblet that evening, but uh, <laughs> they, they, they came to good use. Um, it's obviously something that we'll, we'll pride for the rest of our lives. And yeah. It's going to stand there where, where you can see it. Um, it was my first one, so quite emotional and... and, and uh, Really, uh, a nice. Did you have a little? Moment. Did you have a little something, something out of that? Oh, a little bit of water with something extra. <laughs> <laughs> because I noticed uh, Dion Ferrero and a couple of players were not kissing the jug. They were literally having a dope out of the out of the curry cup. Do yeah. the, the guys actually put some champagne into the curry cup? Yeah, they do. Bit of champagne, bit of beer. Bit of beer. Whatever's going. <laughs> whatever's whatever's Just part of the mix. Well, anyway, let, let's look at let's look at the the, the club side of things now. Um, but yeah, fantastic to have. Uh, South Africa's best team of experts on the show and uh, will be guiding us a little bit through some of the fundamentals of what you need to do to get ready for next season. But let's start with the administrative side. Uh, Mr. H, if we start with you, I mean, uh, we've just come out of the season. I think one of the, one of the things that, uh, that you need before you even start playing the game, start looking at the practical aspects, is you need to have some sort of passion for the game and some sort of vision of where you want to go. Yes, JB. If you if you don't have the passion, don't go there. Yeah. Because it's all uh, uh, ga- uh, you do it for the love of the game. Uh, people say we are mad to do it, but that's what it's about. And club administrators they don't get paid, so you know they the passion must be there to do what they want to do, and then the vision. You know, if you don't know where you're going to, you can't get there. And if you lack the vision, you know, then you, know, you, might, you might keep the ship afloat, but you'll never reach the destination where you want to be. So, if you, I mean, you're talking about a ship staying afloat then. In terms of a, of a ship, ship staying afloat, you obviously need to, you need a good captain. You need a, a good leadership. Of course. And, and you know, the, the leaders who lack that uh, sense of vision, they may achieve some kind of... Uh, Success, yeah. but they will never reach excellence. Yeah, yeah. And we all aim to reach the excellence level. If we don't reach the excellence level, what are you in the game for? 
So are we at that stage now? And I think probably this is the kind of question that, that Stefan and Greg will touch on first is, is making sure you've got your management team sorted out before you even get started next year. But from a club point of view, are we, are the clubs, do, have they finalized their coaches? Do you know? Uh, for their elections. I know Western Province Rugby still has to have an election and the presidency right. has to be decided on that. But on, on the club side, uh, yeah, are, are they of, settled? A number of clubs would have had their annual general meetings already. Right. Some will still have it. But if you are you know, in the position still where you will have your AGM next year and elect officials, you are years behind time. Right. You know, because you're not going to make it. So is it fair to say that by now the clubs should all know who their coaches are for next year? They should. They, they should. should. Because those guys must be busy planning. And if you don't, you know, in, in anything before you start off, you need to know what went yeah. for you last year. If you can't make the analysis and, and decide what, what was wrong and what, what worked for us, yeah. then, you know, and, and we've got a, a simple thing that we give clubs and say, ask these questions. Yeah, yeah. And if, you, if you're on par, then you know what you must do. And um, Greg, let's go to you. Uh, and I think we obviously want to do is we want to interpret things from a, um, from a, from a, from a, a Stormers or a Western Province point of view down to a club level. Um, but I suppose the fundamentals are the same. You've just come out of a season. What is the first thing that you do after the season, knowing that now in the club space you've got four months ahead of you? Mr. H was talking about evaluating. In your terms, how would you translate that? Yeah, I think 100%, JP. I think the fundamentals, like you said, are exactly the same. And I'd like to sort of broaden on that as, as a member of the coaching team at Stormers and Western Province Rugby. I'm sure the planning and preparation that we do going into the new season would be the same at club level. Um, and the first thing you mentioned was evaluate. And I look at it as two things. One, evaluate your own organization, us as a team. Yeah. Where are we? What are our strengths and weaknesses? And what do we need to improve on going into the next season? Bearing in mind for us, it's a super rugby tournament. Secondly, what do top teams do? Top organizations in your, in, in your, in your setup? Whether it's a club league or for us, you know, we'd like to see that we are the top team in super rugby. So we don't want to uh, reinvent the wheel. So two things in terms of evaluation, if I can sum it up, is evaluate yourself, your team, your organization, where do we need to go? Mr. H mentioned if you don't have a vision, if you don't know where you're going, you're not going to get there. I like to think if you fail to plan, you probably plan to fail. Yeah, um, yeah. And then the second thing is look at what the top teams in that setup are doing and learn from them. But now, how important is it that, do you think there's other teams out there uh, keeping an eyeball on what you guys are doing? Without a doubt, um, if I can use a practical example, um, the Lions, obviously they had a change of coach um, post um, Super Rugby with John Mitchell not being involved, but uh, they played really much Stormers Rugby, which was successful rugby in the Super, in the super Rugby tournament in the Curry Cup. Yeah. Uh, they started kicking a lot more, they yeah. made a lot less errors in their own half, and uh, they played a lot more uh, sort of conservative rugby as we were, we were tagged that in, the, in Super Rugby, but in saying that, it was winning rugby. Mm. And, uh, you know, it was a tough team to crack up at uh, um, Coca-Cola Park, and we're lucky to do that in the semi-final. So w when, you're, when you're in your evaluation phase now, um, Steph, let's go to you now. Uh, I think we get closer now in terms of the players. Um, I mean, we, if anything, uh, I think probably you get more uh, player TV time than the players themselves. <laughs> <laughs> we see we see you a bit more than the rest of the guys. But now you come out of the, out of the, the last game. You're a club. What is the first thing that you start looking at? Uh, I, I think just to touch on what Greg said is you need to evaluate. And I think for clubs they need to evaluate which players will probably stay with them. Those players then, what we would do is we put them through medical evaluations and physiotherapy evaluations. Then we need to act upon those results that we get from it. So. In order for those players to play for us next year, it's not always the physical testing that we do with them post-season, but more the medical assessments that we do and to sort out small niggles um, and act upon it, either sur surgical or with rehab, physiotherapy, biokineticist, trainer, etc. Yeah. Um, and that needs to happen in quite a short space of time. Mr. H, how many of the clubs, I mean, in, in Steph's situation here and, and with Greg, the, the Stormers of the Western Province players are contracted, they're contracted for a period of time, they know who their squad is now already. Obviously, they start their first matches much earlier than the clubs. Um, at which stage do the clubs know who their team is going to be? Uh, when, when, when in terms of um, maybe even the registration phase, how, how long does that 
period take? When did the guys get ready? Yeah, well, I, I must say I've been to a few of these, uh, you know, end of year functions of clubs. Yeah. And I will always hear the, the chairman would announce, guys, party tonight, remember, in two weeks' time, we start our training. So there's a lot of guys that are busy. Yeah. And they probably, the, the better organized clubs, they already know, you know, who's there, who, who they, they've set their eyes on people that they want to get into the club, and uh, they're working on all their plans. Yeah. Slowly, perhaps not, you know, and then they'll take a break just over the holiday period and they'll come back again. So they, they sort of stabilize. So those coaches can already be looking at those players and going, okay, you've got a knee problem, you've got a back problem, yeah. you're a little bit. Steph, let's go to you. I was about to say you're a bit overweight, you're a bit underweight in the, in the, in the club space. Um, I know that, <laughs> that in the club space we've got a couple of players who are a little bit overweight, but, um, <laughs> but nevertheless, uh, I'm sure that, that, that they, you know, they'll be enjoying their 50th birthday party soon. So, um, <laughs> um, at which stage do you start hitting the gym is in terms of the off-season, pre-season and, and so forth? Well, for us, we, we do it quite quickly after their break. Um, of course, it's important for us to give the players a medic a medical and then an emotional, mental and physical rest. Yeah. Uh, we, we take between a three to four week post-season break, uh, which is compulsory for the players, and then we start testing, physical testing. Yeah. Uh, we do cardiovascular testing, and then we put them through about a three to four week. This year it will only be three weeks, about three and a half weeks. Last year it was four weeks because we fell out slightly earlier. Um, we put them through that period of, of really tough training, two sessions a day, five days a week for four weeks. When you, when you say tough training, if we break this down to the clubs, um, they, they, they basically are back on the field in um, what, 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 four months' time. Is it, is it, is it fair to say that their, their holiday period should be over in the next two weeks or so, and then after that it's time to hit the gym? I think the big mistake they often make is that there's a lot of expectancy, and they start hitting the gym in my viewpoint, probably too early. Yeah. You need to get away from the game and give yourself that break because when they get through the season six months down the line, they're emotionally drained. And they look back and they see, I actually didn't have a holiday, I didn't enjoy myself. And now the yeah. emotional ne negative side of it really takes a, a big side of, of, of their life where yeah. they could have been well rested out and then you hit the, the, the weights you do your cardiovascular work because I feel the, the improvements there can be a lot quicker than the negative side of not getting enough rest. I would definitely take a month off, off, off away from rugby. You can always get fitter, stronger, leaner, but if you start, where are you going to get the rest from? Greg, if, we, uh, if, if I talk to you about that from a recovery point of view, Steph talks about it very much now from a physical point of view and he, and he touched on the, on the mental aspect. Um, how, um, how much impact does the mental aspect have in terms of the the strategic planning f for you guys for next year. I mean, you're also the kicking coach, which means you've got to work with players like Peter Grant and Katrakilis and so forth, who really have to have a fair amount of brains in terms of the game. Um, how important is mental recovery? No, massive. Obviously, at the high level, I think it's even more so in terms of the exposure to sort of a pressure game for 11 months of the year. So that is very important. And I think Steph's 100% right that, you know, if you don't recover, you can't get that time back and you utilize that three to four week uh, recovery period really well. Um, obviously us in terms of a coaching team, you know, we get together and our second step is to plan and to have a look at how we want to play next year. And uh, there, there's obviously, you know, the, all your evaluation, your strengths and weaknesses that you've looked at will come into, into uh, plan as you, as you start working out your new strategy for the next season. Once you've worked that out, then obviously you can start working with the players in terms of the fundamental skills that they need to improve in the off season. So, so, Steph, you go back to the gym side. How do you know? How do you know when, when, you've, when you've rested enough? And then how hard do you hit the gym? Because there, there was this old school training a few years back of people just doing training on those preggy balls and elastic bands and stuff like that. But it did, they did kind of seem to come a, a, a little bit of... It's, it's back to old school hardcore bench press, hardcore squat, Put on the weight, as much weight as you can off season because come game time, there's no chance to put it back on. I, I, think, I think within the rugby uh, setup worldwide, things are changing every now and again, two, three years. And a lot of what, what is happening now is guys are moving away from really 
tough physical workouts, exactly what you mentioned. And sometimes we call it pie in the sky because it's about training, don't want to mention any exercise regimes, but training in this way where the trend has always showed us to follow this yeah. route. And we have the belief that if you've got the perfect chocolate cake, don't change too many ingredients that it becomes a fruit cake. <laughs> and I think we've, we've fallen yeah. into the trap before that we've, we might have thought that that is the, the end goal. But yeah. um, with the last three, four years, I think we've, within, a, within the limits that we've got with rest and work, we found our, our mix um, of when you need to start after exactly X amount of weeks that you're off. But I still believe getting to the gym, there's a, a, a force curve that you need to try and, um, and beat. Uh, Wait, you've what, got do you, what, do, what do you mean by, by a force curve? Um, we're talking here uh, um, hardcore bench press, hardcore squatting. I mean, there must be a stage, surely, in your, in, during this post or off season stuff that you stress the body as much as possible to gain as much weight as you can. How do you, how do you mean by you know, this curve of yours? I think, I think the, maybe the, just going one step back is, Greg mentioned it earlier, is that the, the trainer, myself, and the coach, or the coaches, need to uh, be in the same frame of mind. And yeah. if, I need, if I think a player needs to be heavy and they think he needs to be lean and quick, then we will always be on different uh, wavelengths. Different paths, yeah. yeah uh, but um, in saying that, if, if it is then to make a player heavy, rugby is still a contact sport. Defensive systems are becoming better the attack is getting uh, less space. Now it's not a, about running around guys, but running over them yeah. and, and trying to achieve the, uh, a player, or achieve a stage of a player's career where he's as strong as he can be, agile, quick, fit, more complete athlete than just being strong or just being fast. And that I think is, is, is where we all uh, need to go and where we, we're chasing answers. Um, I think we're getting closer to that but it's still getting into the gym, hitting the weights, increasing your force, velocity curves, lifting heavy weights as quickly as you can. <laughs> yeah. a lot of, a lot, Mr. H, a lot of uh, very fancy terminology here. Right? Yeah, velocity just, curves. Yeah, Sounds just, like something, yeah. uh, like, a, like a workout you get at a motor car shop. I was just thinking the fruitcakes <laughs> are probably those guys that run up and down the coaches. You know, you still get those coaches. We just give them one channel to they run, run the up cakes. and down along the field, shouting instructions as if they were never at the training field. Mr. Edge, yeah. what sort of training did you do back in your day? Was it we used to run 25 <laughs> times around the field, squat jumps, yeah. and you know, and what's it, duck walking star jumps. and yeah. all that. Uh, and then you go, oh. Greg, Greg I, I think <laughs> one thing though, whether it's star jumps or running 25 times around the field, Steph made a big point there, saying if it works for you, don't change it. Yeah. And if, and if it has worked for you to get your club up to the next level, probably 80% of what you're doing is right anyway. Look for that extra 20%. And that's what he meant with a fruitcake, is often you get the new, you see an advert on TV to take a new supplement, or you say yeah. that this guy's doing a different exercise, that's what he must do. And uh, you actually go away from what's working worked for you. And, um, you know, in our organization, you know, over the last four years, um, even though this trophy is the, probably the first major one, we've been fairly successful yeah. in terms of getting to playoff stages. And, and that was one thing that we did stick to, is what is working for us in terms of our conditioning plan, our recovery plan, our medical plan, as well as our coaching plan. We stuck to where we knew we were, we were weak because of a good evaluation process. We went to look for either new personnel or new coaching strategies or in, in terms of conditioning, we did things slightly different. So I think is, that's the key. Is there, is there a risk factor out there that, that is almost like a dangerous situation? Um, I mean, in this case, for example, you guys, have used, you've been, from a nutrition point of view, you've, you've used Evox for a long time. That's your supplement. You know what it is. You know the quality. You know how safe it is. Yeah. It's a big risk to move away from something like that and you don't know what you're going to get or even what you might get at a later stage that we, it kicks in later. Yeah, than definitely they definitely don't want Skull Burger being the next Lance Armstrong, do we? <laughs> no, no. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't know. With Skull Burger, you're quite safe because I believe it's just red wine and steak. <laughs> yeah, it's well, that, that's and a couple of beers. Me. Done one. <laughs> <laughs> a couple of beers. But of course, you, when, when you've got a guy like that, who, who, you, you, you're blessed to have those kind of genetics. I mean, it's an absolute bonus in any team. Steph. Yeah, of course. Um, I think he, he, the thing with Scala is that he, he looks, and, and not just him, but there's a lot of guys that I feel are born to play rugby. And that is probably the key, is that uh, that's their God-given talent. They realize that, um, and yeah. that's what they do. And Scala's injury was a freak. If you look at it again, I mean, it will happen once in a million times where he gets tackled like that with his stats getting stuck into the, in, 
to the ground. Um, yeah. If it was one or two centimeters to the left or right, he probably would have stood up and carried on. But I mean, just one of those things that happened. Yeah, I talk about uh, people standing up and carrying on. Yeah, Scott Berger certainly is the kind of guy who does. Uh, we look, for, look forward to seeing him ba back in the, on the park next yeah, year. Um, uh, very uh, unfortunate situation, but that is part of pro rugby as well. You've got to learn how to, how to manage those yeah. injuries and come back. And then maybe in some cases, um, a year is only a blip in some players' careers. Uh, for a guy like Skulk, he's been out before. John de Villiers has been out before. Even mm. He was even out one stage for, I think, a year or, or odd and, and look where he is now um, is, is there a way of the body maturing as, as well that it learns to, to to deal with tackles and injuries Steph? Yeah I think there's um, a guy like Paddy Upton who's moved into the mental side of sport with cricket he's mentioned before that one of the 20 types of intelligence is the is contact intelligence yeah um, and we call it being street smart mm. and there's obviously um, when you get all the different things happen a little bit slower. Yeah. Um, but guys like Dwayne Vermeulen, when he got injured against the Cheetahs, um, what was it last year or earlier um, in his career, he said he couldn't do it any other way in that situation, even though he's been in that situation a thousand times. Yeah. So it's about being street smart. And, and just one other thing is that if you've got the same squad from this year to next year, that squad is actually not the same. Because the guy that was young is a year older. The, the guy that was old is now also a year older and he might be going downhill physically where yeah. another guy might be maturing. So we need to keep that in mind. How much tougher, Mr. H, how much tougher will it be for the clubs this year that are going from, uh, from one league up to the next league? We, we, we heard Gerd Rademan from Goodwood uh, say it so nicely not so long ago that he felt that for Goodwood playing against uh, <coughs> Helderberg on that day, that air, and they were uh, one league up and one league down. Um, but he felt that for them playing in that higher division, everything was five meters faster, five, uh, 10 kilos heavier. Um, and that it was quite a step up and that, that one does need to plan for almost like a next level. How much harder will it be for the clubs this year? Because not only are we seeing that clubs are going to a different league, but also that all 90 clubs have actually improved in their rugby significantly so the not a, the standard has come up but they're also going to another league yeah no it's important for for the guys to understand that when you go up you might have won all your games yeah but you might lose all your games in the next division so it's you know unless you adapt and uh, unless you are prepared and you've planned properly <laughs> you are going to find yourself so, so, so otherwise you're going to find yourself it's like repeat, repeating standard nine but you're actually going to matric yeah. <laughs> you find yourself in an awkward spot yeah. so you need to you need to be planning ahead next year folks uh, some of you that are going up you're going to put yourself in a situation that things are going to be a little bit heavier a little bit faster and you need to start preparing yourself uh, for what might, is going to come next year sort of upskill yourself as opposed to last year but going down also you might be complacent and thinking you know, we've been up here, we're coming down here. With these easy. guys, we can easily beat them. Yeah. It doesn't work like that. Yeah. Those guys are just as keen to get out there and go above you. So be prepared, whether you go up or whether you go down. All right, well, talk about uh, clubs then coming up. Be prepared. Um, Steph, Greg, you guys worried about the Kings coming up? <laughs> Don't worry about answering that question. <laughs> we'll leave that. We won't be complacent, JP. <laughs> you, won't be complacent. <laughs> you won't be complacent. Um, but yeah, anyway, look, let's, folks, let's take a look at some of the questions that you sent in on the social media. Of course, you can uh, find us on Twitter on at Cape Rugby TV or on Facebook at www.facebook.com forward slash Cape Rugby TV. Questions coming in then. Uh, a nice question here from Fahim Naidu. If you guys want to go to other clubs, why is it always an issue to go buy clubs to give these guys clearances? Um, the problem is there's no law that you can use against the or what not, whatever. Okay, this is kind of hard to to um, decipher that text there, Mr. H. If <laughs> clear the question, it's something you've got to do with registrations and clearances, and I can't read that. Uh, Registrations and clearances if you want to move from one club to another, another, what is the procedure? Simple, you must write a letter to your club where you belong to and ask for your clearance certificate. Fahim is referring here to some difficulties clearly that he's had from an administrative the law point of view. In the, in the bylaws of the union says no club may withhold a player's clearance certificate. Right. 
So you must issue the clearance certificate. So it's purely up to the administrative yeah. level at club level. Yeah, but and, you and then must supply to Western Province. You must understand, you know, you must write a letter to ask for your clearance. You can't go stand on the field and ask for your clearance certificate. Okay, so a, a, a proper must procedures yeah. must be followed in terms of you, the player, asking your club to let you go. And then if you have a problem that the club don't want to give it, you bring the letter that you gave them <coughs> to to the office. And the office will then try the, the office being the Western Romans Union yeah. offices. Um, how long am I registered at a club for? If I play for you today, five years ago, when can I, do I you need to go? You stay you, registered. I stay until, registered? Yeah, yeah. But I haven't played for you for five years. I must come back to you and ask you to let me go? Yeah. Okay, that's all unless right. unless the club has that. taken you off and we don't find any record of your plans. Right. You, can go you got plans to make a comeback? Yeah, no, 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 no. Uh, no uh, Isn't there an age limit at club rugby? <laughs> <laughs> Listen, there, I won't be making a comeback there. But you talk about players uh, being street smart. Uh, obviously, I come from a different type of sport. Um, so I'm just going to ask you about this from, from from a physical contact point of view. And you mentioned this. Um, and I'll throw this, this at both of you guys. Certainly in the world of boxing, the world of judo, martial arts and so forth, you learn to take contact. You learn how to roll with a punch, you learn how to roll with a throw, you learn how to fall, and all of those things, um, in actual fact, is very good for kids because they learn how to prevent injury. Do the players in the rugby field start learning that type of conditioning where they, they understand how to, how to take a knock, how to breathe when they take a knock, how to rotate when they take a knock? I think uh, there's two sides to it, Jake. So one, one, obviously, when you're in your contact sport, your first thing you do is you make sure you're properly conditioned for it. And that's, yeah. a, that's away from the game. It might be in a gym. It might be wherever, in a studio, if you're doing Pilates or whatever the case may be, in a boxing studio. The second thing is you actually do the sport and you do fundamental skills in, yeah. in whether it's a jab, jab, punch. I don't know, I'm getting your field, but we'll do <laughs> breakdown skills or tackle technique, yeah. which is smaller controlled. And you build it up until eventually you're doing many games and a full game. Yeah. So, um, How do you find the balance? How do you find the balance between, um, between all the rugby stuff where you actually have to focus on hand skills and passing and that what you mentioned now sort of the off-field stuff yeah. and then of course your personal time of gym and training and stuff like that how do you get the players time management right? I think the key is to get it right in the off-season and now's the time to make sure that the guy is strong enough so that when you introduce the ball or the tackle bag or the opponent later on in your in your off-season or pre-season yeah. that his conditioning is done and that's where like Steph said if he hasn't recovered and he's and he's now doing off-season on the basis of an injury or a niggle he's going to pick up uh, problems when you add that load in the off-season. However, if he's fully recovered and you've got a healthy athlete there and he's got four, five or six weeks ideally and he really trains hard and he gets um, nice and strong and fit in the gym, then when you start introducing the, 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 the skill component, the tackle bag or the body suit, um, etc., then um, you, know, you get good results in terms of develop, developing that fundamental skill. And yeah. in us, it's obviously, it's the, the collisions are getting bigger and bigger each year. The guys, yeah. Eben Etzebet, 21 years old, you wouldn't see a 21-year-old looking like that five, six years ago. Um, and, you, you know, you're expecting to play against the like Eben Etzebet in your, in your position too. And those two guys running into each other is a fair, fair collision. <laughs> right, Mr. H, we're talking here. Uh, Greg and I was talking a, a, a lot about uh, the fact that you have got players um, and are preparing off-season. But it, it, it's, it seems to be, you know, at a fairly high level here. We, we're talking about players... Uh, that have to go to gym, they've got to find time, uh, club level is obviously difficult, people are working during the day, um, but are we seeing even club rugby players moving into uh, a space that this kind of information from the, from the Western Province space is beneficial, that they can start applying it, even though not everything is practical, because time is a factor, and I think time is probably the biggest yeah. issue for any player. Mm -hmm. are, are we seeing the club slowly migrate to that, that it's not just Saturday rugby anymore? Oh yes, um, if you look at, let's take a club like Salorians for instance, mm. they in, like, they're not in the Super League, A or B, they're in the Premier League. Yeah. And if you look at what they you know, did in the club, the people that they appoint, the people that they get to play for the club, then you can see, you know, what is happening in club rugby? Yeah, yeah. It's not only at the top ten where where we have the virtually professional pro guys coaching. It's going down, 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 and the guys are improving their skills. They are doing courses. They are getting you know uh, better equipped to do the job. 
and the players themselves, because of the, the, the coach now knows what is required. So they go to gyms, they do all kinds of things that improve. And if you look at previously, I think a few years ago, conditioning was, yeah. was a word that wasn't known. It's something you used in your hair. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if you had. Yeah. If you had it. And, and uh, you know, gym <laughs> work was for a few special people. Yeah. But now it's become it's part become of the... So, yeah. th I mean, this, this just goes to emphasize again why it's so important for us to use the knowledge from a club point of view of the guys here. Exactly. I think, you know, we are so uh, blessed and so uh, we, 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 we can't... The club players, if they listen to what is offered here for people, from people that are the champion, they, they work with the champions of yeah. South Africa. Yeah. Yeah. Then, what more do you want? On, on that note, um, Greg, how important is the management team, the relationship between the management team? I mean, you've got leadership there of Alistair Kutsia that's obviously surpassed expectation, not expectation, but surpassed uh, anyone else in South Africa in terms of how to bring a team together and, and, and win, win the trophy and come out as the best. You've got great other management team around you like Robbie Fleck and Matthew Proudfoot and the two of you. Um, and not to mention, of course, the, the rest of the team is an enormously big team, but how important is it for the management team to gel? I think that's a massive point you made there, JP, and that's what, something that we found is, um, you know, especially at our level, top teams are all doing similar things in the gym or coaching-wise, even strategy-wise, yeah. very similar. But uh, what Alistair has managed to do really successfully with us is bring that group together. And you said we've got 11 on the management team and we've got a squad of 30-odd players is to make that team a family, and that's where, he, where he's really good at, at that. He's, he listens to each person, yeah. whether you're in the team, whether you're injured, whether you're the, the captain, mm. or the, cutting the oranges at half time. And it, the same with the management team. And uh, you know, people th throw words around like team spirit and culture, etc. But that's one thing we've found that we've, we've started to work on really you know, closely. We are a uh, you know, varied bunch in Cape Town, you know, different backgrounds, and it's often been tough in the past to pull everyone together and be focused on the same vision and same yeah, plan yeah, and yeah. I think Alice has really managed to do that and uh, you know we, we use the f word family and love but that's exactly how we feel for each other and yeah. uh, that's important I think in those dark moments in a Curry Cup final when you're defending your line with uh, a lot of people in Cape Town hoping you bring that beautiful trophy back those are the things that get you through is uh, it's more than just the, the strategy or the that, that last bench press that you did it's actually about what you feel for each other um, within the group and uh, Hopefully well, we can build on that. You know, I find it, I find it almost emotional to hear you say that because uh, in the club rugby space, that's what club rugby is about. There's no money. Mm -hmm. You only play for the community. You play for the love of the game. It's, pride. You play for the pride. Mr. Yeah. H, would you agree with me that they've yeah. almost got an advantage <laughs> over the difficulties of a professional rugby? When yeah, you're yeah, at yeah, a club yeah. level, you are playing for the family. You're yeah. playing for, because your mom or your dad played for this yep. club. Uh, it's a different type of passion. It is a different type of passion and it's, uh, it's something that, you know, if, if the management builds on it and they, you know, I, I, I've been busy with SA Rugby about uh, training. We, 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 they're going to do a thing called Club Smart. And the whole, the whole project is, when I listen there, the, the communication, communication, yeah, yeah. communication. Mm. You know, if if we don't talk to one another, if if the coach doesn't know what the the, the 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 chairman actually wants out of the player, if the players don't know what the coach wants, mm. you know, if that kind of communication is not there, then you know everything falls flat. And it's so important that the clubs work on that strategy. Yeah. You know, the communication strategy of the club is probably more important than anything else that that is available well hopefully with a bit of leadership from western promise rugby and if you guys go to the media seminars and i believe there is going to be one more media seminar you will learn more about the communication strategy at western province rugby so pay attention to when we do that next media seminar um, that's of course going to help you wrap up the year in preparation for next year not only about how to communicate with the clubs and your players and the administrative side of things but also how to get prepped right now before it's too late to get yourself sponsorship for next year. So critically important that you, 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 you keep yourself in the mix for that. So look out for the final media seminar for 2012.
going to be very important. Let's go back to the social media questions that came in, and uh, then we'll take an ad break. Um, Mark Anthony Fletcher, discuss the new scrumming law for next year. Will the clubs adapt? Um, Greg, I suppose between you and Steph, uh, the scrumming law, um, maybe you can fill us in on that. Yeah, basically, instead of the crouch, touch, pause, engage thing, they've been, I think they've sh shortened it to mm. crouch, touch, I don't know what they do. What is hit or, no, that's a near three. Instead of a five tier or five step process, it's a three step process. They've done it quite successfully in the ITM Cup in New Zealand and also, yeah. you know, the Heineken Cup games mm. or Premiership that you see on TV. So I don't think it's going to be a major influence. Hopefully it uh, does help because there have been an unbelievable uh, amount of I, reset I, scrum. So. If I, if I remember correctly, I heard something about um, it's crouch touch and then it's got something to do with the alignment. They want to get the alignment right first before the engage so that the clubs, even though there's a three phase. Yeah, that'll happen before the crouch even, the alignment, yeah. then it'll be crouch touch hit or crouch, I can't remember so the, the third the, word. So there's really, you don't think there's going to be any impact? No, I think obviously I mean, you're going to have to... impact, but I mean... In terms of your, your, <laughs> your coaching, your, your, your preparation, you have to prepare a little bit of a timing issue. End of the day, it's yeah. still about that timing issue. Right. It just is... It's a shorter process, so... Okay, so we're not really going to see any huge law changes. It's purely a, a, a technical I mean, yeah. kind of aspect. I, st I still believe all scummy infringements must be a uh, 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 short-arm penalty, uh, you know, uh, free kick. An, an immediate free kick? Yeah. Short-arm? Yeah, not, not a penalty, because I think most of the time it's you know it's, it's, the opposite, the ref <laughs> it's almost too, it's almost impossible to guess yeah. what exactly went wrong yeah. i mean i looked at a, a video the other day again of our match yeah where beast hand is on the ground yeah. and we get penalized you know? yeah well, surely he should have been penalized first yeah. unfortunately with most of the game even if we go to the breakdown there's so many things that a ref has to look to yeah. he can't penalize any number of players <laughs> at any given yeah. time yeah. so it yeah. is a bit of luck of the draw yeah. And uh, you know, if one, you, one if thing you get like the penalty, it's fine, yeah. yeah but I don't think that so. was quite good about winning the carry cup when most of the calls did go against us, Mr. H. <laughs> one for you, one for me. I got a feeling old Beast was uh, reaching for his razor there when he was uh, going down there. But um, yeah, anyway, uh, folks, it is time for us to take an ad break. When we come back, we'll continue our conversation with uh, Greg Hechter, Stefan de Tue from uh, the Stormers and Western Rollins Rugby, and of course, Mr. H is going to update us a little bit more on the administrative side. We'll be back with you guys in a moment. Get so much more for so much less at Tata Wistenberg. Buy an Indica Vista Ego from $9.99 per month with a 3-year 100,000 km warranty, 4 years 100,000 km service plan, 3 years unlimited roadside assistance and more. To find out more, SMS the word TATA to 33280 and one of our service consultants will be in touch with you shortly. Tata is a good buy for sure. Hello everybody, welcome back to Cape Rugby TV here on Wednesdays at 9 o'clock. Nice to have you along. Of course, on the show with me this evening is uh, from Western Province, Greg Hechter, Stefan de Tue and Herman Abrams. Next week, we'll be taking a look at uh, some of the elections. Uh, Mr. H, uh, next week we'll know who the nominees are for various elective processes at Western Province? Yeah, it's the executive that will be elected. Right. It's the president, the deputy president, the vice president and in eight... Uh, Executive members, additional executive members. And this happens every two years? Every two years. Okay, and we'll, we'll find out more about that next year, uh, next week, folks, when we'll know who those uh, various officials are and, and uh, who the candidates are up for a nomination. As you know, it was the Super Brew competition for the last couple of days, or at least, uh, should I say, the last couple of months. It was pretty tight. We had more than a 1,000 uh, Super Brew members joining the Cape Rugby TV pool over the last season. Uh, enjoying the predictive games in the um, uh, Curry Cup space. And uh, without us having to chase him down, we, he managed to track us down. Our Super Brew winner, Fritz de Kock. Hello everybody, it's Morgan Newman from Cape Rugby TV. As you may know, after four months of Curry Cup Rugby and score predictions, it's finally time for us to announce Fritz de Kock as our Cape Rugby TV winner for 2012. Fritz, congratulations, you must be excited. Yeah, thank you very much, I'm, I'm, I'm very excited. It was it was very, very good pool and uh, yeah, like I said, the, the price is, is worth it. <laughs> you wanna share your secret with us for the year? Um, yeah, well, just 
going with gut, um, backing problems <laughs> probably all the way. Um, and yeah, I mean, and ended up, up first. Well, congratulations. Let me hand over your signed DHL Western Province rugby jersey. There you see it, folks. Thank you to the guys at Evox Advanced Nutrition for supplying us with the jersey. Fritz, excited? Are you going to find a special place in the home for it? Uh, definitely. I'm, I'm very excited. It's, it's going to be a pride and joy of me. I'm very chuffed. And any tips for the guys looking forward to next year? Um, don't win me. <laughs> no, just go with your gut and uh, if you think province is down, they, they do get up. Well, there you have it, folks. Congratulations once again to Fritz the Cook, our winner of our Cape Rugby TV Super Bowl Pool for 2012. For more, catch us on Cape Rugby TV every Wednesday night at 9 o'clock. See you guys then. Bye-bye. There you go, folks. Morgan Newman smiling as big as a Cheshire cat, giving away that uh, signed, which is, of course, now very valuable, signed uh, Western Province uh, jersey, uh, courtesy of the guys at Evox Advanced Nutrition. Um, Greg, you must like to hear that. Uh, Super Brew winner saying, when you think Western Province is down, this is him now giving the, the method of how you win Super Brew, eh? He says, just stick with your team and they'll, they will come back. Yeah, I suppose that's the type of supporters we're fortunate to have in the, in the Western Cape. It's a yeah. special team to, to obviously represent and to work for and uh, lots of supporters like that out there. It's good to see. Uh, Mr. H, uh, those jerseys, uh, signed jerseys, uh, they're worth quite a bit huh? now. Yeah, yeah, now, now it's, uh, you know, it's a collector's item. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I don't know, these guys probably planning to, to be the champions again next year. But for the rest of the year, until the final next year, we are the champions. We are the champions, yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Of course, uh, that's, what, that's what you want to uh, stay uh, now, folks, is you really now want to stay a Western Brown supporter. <laughs> Um, and, and what I love about it is that now finally Western Province has got like bragging rights like Liverpool that they're the best r uh, rugby team and now the best almost like Liverpool's the best soccer team if you know what I mean. Um, uh, you, Mr. H, you love that, eh? Yeah, I love that. Uh, <laughs> Liverpool. <laughs> <laughs> they are the, you know, I mean, let's face it. They are the best uh, soccer they, team they in the world? Other you know, soccer clubs that are also you know, aspiring yeah, to uh, uh, reach that height. That level, know, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, folks, yeah, listen, it's time for us, of course, to say thanks to our sponsors, Evox Advanced Nutrition, who did give away that signed jersey courtesy of, um, uh, well, for the Super Brew competition. And it is now time for you to win yourself and falling in line with what Western Province Rugby guys are talking about. And then you see Evox behind me right now. Uh, falling in line with that, it's the before, the during, and the after opportunity for you to win for yourself a, uh, a full pack, getting yourself ready for for club rugby for next year. So, without any further ado, this is the before. This is the Super Carbo. This is what you want to put yourself in the mix to win for now. Super Carbo, this is what you're going to take. Uh, oh, sorry, this is the during. Um, Steph, you guys use this during, right? It's yeah, we often... Super uh, Carbo? Yeah, yeah. yeah let's try that at you, see what you think of that. Is that the original thing? I know it quite well, yeah. You know it quite well? Nice how, new label. How often do you guys use it at, at, uh, from, from a player perspective? Yeah, we, we use it quite often and especially in the gym, we, um, we probably go for the cytocrank before well, let me give you that one sessions. Is that, uh, is that it? Yeah, more often, uh, the cytocrank. When, um, when, when would you use the cytocrank from a before point of view? Shucks, we, we, we use the, the cytocrank, um, if I'm uh, correct in saying that, is, is just a new name for another product which we used yes, to use before, yes, yes, yeah. the Cytovox. Yes, it's a, it's a new, yeah. Yes, so, we, we use it, we used to use it only during, um, before, during and uh, post matches. Yeah. Now we've uh, combined it with our gym sessions and uh, we put it out there for players to mix in their bottles before they hit the gym. And then they take it either before or before and during. Um, and then obviously afterwards they, they use the other supplements that they've got from Evox. So it's a good product for us. Um, we go through tabs and tabs of these. So um, you'll use the cider crank before training? Yeah. Before gym, before before gym definitely. Before matches, before matches, yes. And then you'd use the super carbo as a as an energy drink, sort of during practice, uh, stuff like that. Yeah, and and we've mixed both. We've mixed it before. Yeah. Um, <laughs> we, we play around with a couple of things. You play around with it. Yeah. Right? Uh, we we found that in uh, the uh, individual components they're better to use. Yeah. Um, we use the cyto the cyto crank probably sixty percent of the time, and then we use the um, the super carbo for the other forty. But it, it, it comes down to individual taste as well, because the, the players, for them, and I think that's the, the key, which Greg also mentioned earlier, is that um, 
you can't throw everything at all the players. You need to individualize slightly, and that's what uh, I think we've got right. Right, um, then let's just ask you about the uh, rapid recovery. This is, the, this is probably, would you say recovery, look, I mean, we always say recovery is the most important thing. Uh, do you agree with that? Yeah, no, definitely. I think that's probably the one thing we often get wrong is that after, mostly after field sessions, players just want to get home or they just want to go elsewhere or go to a meeting or do stuff. And I think it's, it's to replenish what you've used. And if you can get that right, you've, you've won the battle yeah. um, halfway at least. Uh, right, guys, you can slide those back to me. <coughs> And uh, of course, folks. Uh, yeah, you just <laughs> this is playing. It's like playing a uh, carrom board. <laughs> okay, so the Evox product sliding across the desk here. Then you've got your before, uh, your during, and your after, and you can put yourself in the mix to win these products. And uh, you can see them in, in there. Right, folks. The other product that's just come out now uh, from Evox. Instead, you said this is another product that you use. Is, is the 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 uh, the ready to drinks. These these are available, of course, in store. But uh, these these little shakes. Easy to drink, easy to consume, pre-mixed, uh, important for the players? Yeah, we, we, we fly all over the world and, and just not worldwide but also locally and we need to get something that's convenient for us to travel with. And yeah. I think Evox with, with them being on board they've made our lives a lot easier with, that, uh, art, with those RTDs, the, the yeah. protein shakes. Um, it's a necessity for us after matches, it's compulsory for the players to take and uh, we've used it. For a while. Yeah, so folks, uh, yeah, you can see it. There's the actual um, the protein shake, a uh, little uh, ready to drink. They, you know, abbreviated as RTDs. You can see it here in my hand right now, um, and they are available and uh, convenient. So as used by the stormers. So why don't you pop out there and, and get that? There you can see it on the screen right now. Okay, so if you want to win for yourself this Evox hamper, double three two eight zero, and uh, you put yourself in the mix to win this uh, product. Last week's winner, congratulations to Gavin Tate. Gavin wins for himself uh, that uh, before, during and after hamper, the Saito crank, the Super Carbo and the Rapid Recovery. Congratulations, Gavin. You are this week's Evox winner. Right, folks, um, for those of you that uh, want to, of course, know what's happening in the Springbok side, it is time for us to quickly have a look at the fixtures for the box coming up this weekend. Let's see who they're up against. This Saturday, it's Ireland against South Africa at the Aviva Stadium. The next Saturday, we see Scotland take on South Africa, and it's England and South Africa. Uh, Greg, you guys must be proud to have some of the boys in the team. Yeah, definitely well-deserved, you know, and uh, I think the guys will do well. It'll be a tough tour after a long season, um, but it's always good to have a few province players in the mix. Is it disruptive for you, Steph, or do you guys get through the... Are you so used to it now that you know you're, some of your box is going to be away for a couple of weeks and, and then they'll come back? I think uh, they, they Springboks because they they live their lives like Springboks, so uh, they probably the least of our worries. Yeah. Uh, we need to give them a comp compulsory break. It's always a, a tough ball to gamble with because we need to get them right for Super Rugby. And I think the the key for us and funny enough, John got injured now with a soft tissue two weeks ago. But a guy like him last year had a complete off season with us, pre season with us, and he was actually injury free. Uh, for most of the season, except for the injury he picked up on, on Super Rugby Tour, which was not soft tissue or not something from overuse. And um, in saying that, those Springboks, we've got a specific plan for them, and the, the key for us is not to throw them uh, in too early, to make sure they're well prepared, but also, um, in saying that, to give them ample rest and to make sure they, they recovered for our season. All right, there you go, folks. Uh, so, yeah, I like the way that Steph phrased that, uh, those Springboks. They know what they're doing. They're in good hands. So sort of like the least of your worries. They're going to come back and they're going to add some more value back to the team, yep. hopefully. Well, not hopefully. I mean, obviously, because well, they would have gone also have learned more. That's what well, I mean. Just the, w the way they conduct themselves. Yeah. I, I've always said that when I started getting into the system is you start working with Springboks and then you immediately realize why they're Springboks. Yeah. And yeah. I think if, if a lot of guys, even from club level, there's there have been players coming through, a guy like Francois Lowe was sitting with his crutches, with his foot in a moon boot from under 21 level in the rain, coming from a club, waiting for his chance with province under 21 and now eventually he's a springbok. Yeah. There are ample guys that, that one can probably use in, in that regard um, and that's just the way they live their lives. Okay, and finally Mr. H, if we can just touch on some of the administrative details. If you ask yourself those questions, you can judge where you are. Have you come, become complacent 
do we still understand and respect the duties of one another? In club rugby, the, the, you know, the worst things is when people start arguing about whose job is it and who was supposed to do it. And, yeah. uh, do we still cover the needs of our club? You know? yeah. Do we analyze what we've planned regularly? Yeah. Don't wait till the end of the year to say, oh, but we never did this. You, know, we, you, must, you must do it regularly. And uh, do you inspire the people around you? You as the leader, you must inspire people. You must you make them enthusiastic of what they must do. Yeah. And so you can go on, you know, and uh, again, communication and are the best people in the positions, you know. It's not just because it's my family club, I must be the chairman. Is mm -hmm. the best person the chairman? Is the best person the coach? Who, who decides at the club who's the best man for the job? The players. The players. The players normally have uh, the AGM, all, all the members, you know, they do the... They can vote for the chairman for whoever, and, yeah. and, and the committee and, and so forth. And on a final mo note, Joe, you mentioned you've got to start um, uh, looking at your goals for next year. Yeah, and see how far are we away from our goals. Right. And are these goals achievable? You know, a lot yeah. of sense in saying we want to win or every game must be the bonus point and mm. all the scores must be above. You must have realistic goals yeah. that is achievable so that after the first month you can say, well, we have achieved this, you know, yeah. and then say, guys, we're on the right track. So a lot more strategic thinking. Let's quickly have a look at that slide one more time, folks, and what you'll see on your screen right now. The questions that you need to be asking yourself are, have you become complacent? Do you still understand and respect the duties of each administrator? Do your collective inputs cover the needs of the clubs? Are you ahead of those around you? Are you innovative and inspirational? Do you analyze your own contribution, commitment, and dedication on a regular basis? Does your enthusiasm rub off on the rest? Is your communication with the rest of the club perfect? Do you still have the best man for the job? And of course, have you achieved your goals? Well, there you go. Those are your key points from an administrative point of view that you need to be considering for next year. And quite frankly, those uh, checklist list probably isn't very far off what uh, the guys from Western Province have been talking to us about. Greg Hechter, um, uh, head conditioning coach, kicking coach, assistant coach at Western Province Rugby. It's been a real pleasure having you on the show. It's long overdue and we hope to see you on the show a lot more in the future. My pleasure, Jacques. Really enjoyed being here. Thank you very much and good luck to everyone out there with the, as they start their preparations for what will be a super year next year. Yeah, I know. I'm, I'm sure it's going to be very exciting. And Steph, uh, we look forward to... To, to more from you guys uh, and uh, you know as I said we've seen you on the show before the way we can get the camera out there and watch how you you mess some of the boys up on the, on the, on the side of the field always interesting most hated uh, person for a couple of weeks in the year but that's, a, that's <laughs> the job if you're not hated you're not doing your job right do you guys think we should do a club rugby idols where we bring some of the club players out and see if they can hit the standards of the, of the professionals It'll be fun to watch. <laughs> it'll be, it'll be, uh, it'll be good. It'll be challenging. It'll be interesting. You never know who you might unearth out there. You know, I'm right. sure there's a lot of talent. Yeah. yeah, yeah, you might, yeah, you might discover a gem, <laughs> the idol's gem, and your prize will be <laughs> 12 weeks of hell. <laughs> 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 and Mr. H, uh, yeah, we'll of course uh, look next week at the the various elective and administrative stuff at the at the, at the union, but. Thank you very much from your side. I think from an administrative point of view, the clubs uh, have got a bit of guidance in terms of what it is that they should be looking at for next year. Thanks and uh, congratulations to Sia Kulisi for yeah. receiving a Young Player of the Year award. That comes from via the Department of Sport. You remember where we were? And then yes. from there was nominated for Western Cape and from Western Cape to South Africa. So Brilliant. it's great. Well, there you go. Sia Khaleesi, uh, Sportsman of the Year. Um, sorry, Heineke, if you're watching the show right now, you might want to pick up on that one. Um, for the rest, gentlemen, thank you very much. It's been a pleasure. <laughs> sorry, I just had to throw that in there. Select more Western Province players for being Springboks. That's a wrap from me. We'll see you guys next week, same time, same place. Have a fantastic sporting weekend and back the box this weekend. Even uh, if you're watching Heine, Kameo on the Heine Cam, which I see now is not a walkie-talkie anymore. It's a small little microphone. Have a great weekend. Bye-bye. <laughs>